Hi guys, happy Thursday. Um, first off, I want to apologize for the um, audio issues the last couple of days. I tried recording the videos straight through Canvas and apparently there's some kind of um, glitch thing with it that made the audio not work. So hopefully this works um, and hopefully we figure out a way to fix the Canvas issue. But we are going to be moving into a very interesting part in Indian history and that is the moments leading up to their independence um, and the story behind it is known as the partition of India so to understand the partition there are two people we need to kind of study a, a bit more in detail um, and those two people would be Mohanda Gandhi over here which I'm some of you may have heard his name before. Um, he's very, a very influential figure in Indian history um, for a couple reasons we'll get into here in a minute. And then there is this man over here, Muhammad al Jannah, and he is the guy who most people today credit as being the father of Pakistan. Um, and I'll explain why these two men are relevant here in a minute. Um, so our first thing is there are we're gonna start with Gandhi. Um, so you'll often, see, his real name is Mohanda Gandhi, but often you'll see him referred to as Mahatma Gandhi, which is Hindu for the great souled one. Um, he was born on October 2nd, 1869. Um, before we get too far, on the notes page that you opened before this video, um, I would fill in this part right here and under his early life. Um, born October 2nd in 89 in Porbandar, India. Um, he was influenced by his parents' devout Hindu and Jainist faith, and he developed a deep appreciation for self-discipline and nonviolence. Um, so one thing that is unique in Gandhi, and I would put this under education, he left India for London to study law at one of the universities there. Um, a lot of times in colonial India under the British, those Indians in higher castes or in higher positions of authority within India could often send their children to London or England to study various degrees. Um, Gandhi was one of those people and he was lucky enough to go to London to study to become a lawyer. Um, he was one of many upper caste Indians to receive Western education. Um, his father was a Vaishya. So because of his father's standing, he was able to travel to London to receive legal training. Um, so, oh, this is in the wrong order, but these are some of the vocab terms you'll need to know here and here shortly. Um, partition, the INC, Indian National Congress, and then Satyagraha, I think. And that's the practice of civil disobedience, which we'll get to here in a minute. So after completing his law degree, Gandhi decided to come back to India and set up his own law practice, which did not do well. Um, however, he was in luck and he found a job with a law firm that sent him to South Africa, which was also a British colony at the time. Um, and Gandhi would spend probably the next 20 years there working for this law firm, and he was outraged at the treatment that he and his family received as Indian immigrants. Um, one of the things that really made Gandhi angry was he was asked to give up his seat on the train to a European passenger and then beaten up by the conductor essentially when he refused to do so. Um, so this experience, among others, led Gandhi to develop and teach the ideas of Satyagraha, which stands for truth and firmness, or in other words, passive resistance. So in other words, resisting unjust laws as he saw them through nonviolent means, through passive resistance. You're resisting, but you're not fighting back. Um, so Gandhi took these teachings and led a protest of working and living conditions in South Africa 
and his protests would go on for eight years until a deal was reached in 1913. Um, in 1914, he would return to India, and although he supported the British war effort in World War I and later World War II, he was still very critical of the actions taken by the British government in India. Um, in the 1920s, he took on a leadership role in an Indian independence movement, and he soon joined the Indian National Congress, where he was a high-ranking official there. And during the years leading up to World War II, and even during World War II, Gandhi and some of the other members of the INC, the, that Indian National Congress, would lead um, protests of British goods and businesses, boycotts basically. They would refuse to buy British goods and or services as a protest of British actions in India. Um, so post-war Gandhi, or during and post-war Gandhi. In the early 1930s, Gandhi and the INC began trying to negotiate some deals with the British government, but didn't, they didn't get very far. And Gandhi himself was even arrested twice for his protests. Um, during World War II, the entire Indian National Congress was arrested by the British. And soon after, Gandhi began calling for the entire withdrawal of British troops in India and the creation of an independent India. Um, after the war, 1948, India was granted independence, but as part of the agreement negotiated with the INC and the Muslim League, which we'll talk about here in a second, uh, India, the territory of India under the British, which included Pakistan, was split with Muslim Pakistan and Hindu India. Um, Gandhi was actually opposed to this partition, splitting it into India and Pakistan, but he supported the deal originally in the hopes that he could reach an agreement with the Muslim population in India and bring them back into India. Um, unfortunately, that did not work. And in 1948, Gandhi was murdered by a Hindu nationalist who was angry at the fact that Gandhi was willing to work with the Muslims. So Gandhi was murdered for his willingness to work with the Muslim League in regards to a post-war unification between India and Pakistan. Um, so that's Gandhi. Now let's get into the man on the other side, Muhammad al-Jinnah. Um, he was born in what is today Karachi, Pakistan, on Christmas Day, 1876. Um, at the time, India was part of Pakistan and not its own country. Um, his father was a merchant who managed for Jinnah and his six other siblings. Um, Jinnah had a very troubled childhood. He was kicked out of several schools for his uh, behavior. Um, but he was still offered the opportunity to study in London, had to study law like Gandhi. Um, but before he left, his mom convinced him that he needed to get married. So he married his first wife. And then soon after leaving, both his mom and his wife um, died. I'm not sure entirely what caused them to die, but it was a weird coincidence that both of them died shortly after he left for London. Um, Jenna would continue his law studies in London at, despite his mother and wife dying. And when he passed the bar exam, the legal exam in 1896, he was the youngest person to have ever passed the law exam in India. Um, Jenna would return to India after completing his law degree and set up his own law practice in Bombay, India, where he'd practice for the next 40 years. And then he would argue some pretty high profile cases along the way. Um, one of the things that got him involved in politics though was that often while he was in London, he would British, he would British visit the British House of Commons, which is where parliament meets and he would watch the government in action there, and he was increasingly heartbroken and frustrated 
at um, what he saw as decisions being made about India without Indian representation. Um, he felt that if they were going to make laws and decisions about his home, they should have representatives there. And they largely did not. And so once he returned to in India, he began actively participating in politics, particularly urging for a independent India. Um, Jinnah would eventually join the Indian National Congress along with Gandhi and as well as the All Muslim League. Um, at first, Jinnah worked with Hindu leaders in the INC, believing that Muslims could and would be protected under a united India. Um, over time, though, he, he realized that this wouldn't work and could never happen. And so he began advocating for two separate countries, Hindu India and Muslim Pakistan. Um, in the 30s and 40s, Jinnah advocated for this solution. And in 1948, India was divided into three parts of um, Hindu majority India, which you can see here in the reddish portions, a Muslim Pakistan over here in the West, and also a Muslim section over here that originally was also part of Pakistan. So you had pa West Pakistan over here, and then you had what was known as East Pakistan over here. Um, in 1971, East Pakistan would become the country of Bangladesh. So originally, it was split into two countries, but in 1971, Bangladesh became its own independent country separate from Pakistan. Um, so after the partition, Jinnah was chosen to lead the newly created Pakistan. Um, however, he would die about a year or so later of tuberculosis on September 11th. And today he is often celebrated as the father of Pakistan for his work in creating a Muslim state on the Indian subcontinent. Um, so your assignment for today is to finish filling out or fill out the notes sheet that you picked, that you opened on the previous page of the module and then take a screenshot of that and upload it to Canvas. Um, and then tomorrow we'll go into some more details on a few other things. But for today, um, your assignment is just to fill in the notes and turn in a screenshot of those for me. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Other than that, I hope you guys have a good rest of the day and I will see you all tomorrow.